So that just leaves the smart controls connected to the effects and EQ on the output channel. Right. Now, the volume and pan, we leave those alone. They don't need to be edited. So next, we've got body and presence. Now, uh, in the previous tutorial, I, I told you, body and presence, where you see these two controls, you get them for kicks, snares, claps, and occasionally other drums. These two are connected to the EQ on the output channel for the Ultra Beat Voice. So let's open the EQ here on the channel. Here's the EQ. So there's my EQ. And before the body and presence, uh, before I move them, there is a low cut here, rolling off at 6 dB an octave, starting at 128 hertz. So I'm going to lower that down so I get less low cut. Now my body control is boosting and cutting at this center frequency of 172 hertz with this 0.60 Q width. Okay. If you want to change the frequency, the body control is boosting and cutting. Drag the frequency to change it. I'm going to change it to 200 hertz, and I'm going to slightly widen the Q. Okay, that's that done. If you want to change the amount of cut and boost, which is currently 24 dB in either direction, here's the parameters here. That's the minimum range, the cut, minus 24. That's the maximum, the boost, plus 24. Again, don't, by mistake, make these two values the same. Logic will crash. I'm going to leave it at cut of 24 dB and a boost of 24 dB, but I've changed the frequency. Okay, The presence is boosting and cutting by 12 dB at this center frequency of, five, of just over 3K with a Q of 0 0.20. Again, if you want to change that frequency being boosted and cut by the presence control, move the frequency. I'm going to leave it at 3K, just over 3K. If you want to change the width, change it like that. I'll just leave it. If you want to change the amount of boost and cut for this presence control, here's the cut, minus 12 dB, here's the boost, plus 12. You can change those if you want. All right, so I'll just leave this one alone, but I've changed the body to a different frequency. All right, that's the EQ done. Okay, so then that just leaves the envelope and distortion. Now, as we learned in the previous part of these tutorials, where you see the envelope smart control for a voice, it's always controlling the envelope plugin on the output. Here it is. This is a very common plugin effect. It's on the output for nearly all the factory voices. Um, I'm going to leave that. This is a useful plugin to have. It increases the attack, the snap of a voice, or softens it. Hang on. Let's just put the length back. Yeah. It can make this this envelope this envelope of control by the envelope control it's a useful plugin. It makes the voice more snappy and attacking. Or or softer. So I'm just gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave the plugin on the output channel for this voice for editing and I'm gonna leave the envelope smart control here controlling it. Don't need to touch that, leave that. So that just leaves this distortion. I don't want distortion on my custom snare. We're editing this after party snare and it's got this distortion control controlling the fuzz wire and the gainer. There's the mapping for this pot. It's controlling various parameters on the fuzz wire and the gainer and it's bypassing the fuzz wire and gainer as well. So it's controlling these two plugins. The fuzz wire followed by the gainer. And what it does is when the pot is at the minimum travel, completely counterclockwise, it turns both plugins off. Then you move the pot up 1% and it turns them both on. Look, on, off, on, off. So you turn up the pot, it turns both plugins on, and then it turns up the distortion. And the more the distortion gets turned up, the gainer gets slightly turned down to compensate for the increased level of the distortion. All right. So it turns both plugins on and off and turns up the distortion. And that effect of turning both plugins off and on at the bottom of the travel, that's these two parameters here, these two mappings, the bypass for the fuzz one, the bypass for the gainer. Right? Remember that, because we're going to come back to that. 
So I, I don't want distortion, right? So first I'll get rid of the gainer, change it to no plugin. That leaves a gap. Just move these two plugins up. Okay, so now we re remove the gainer. This distortion control is now only mapped to the fuzzoir. Now I'm going to change this fuzzoir distortion plugin for a different plugin. And when I do that, this distortion control, which is mapped to the fuzzoir, will become unmapped because I'm removing the plugin it's connected to. So let's change the fuzzoir to amps and pedals, pedal board stereo. Boom. I've changed the fuzzoir plugin to this pedal board plugin. The smart control here now becomes unmapped because I took away the fuzzoir. So on this pedal board, I'm going to put a spring reverb and a mixer. Okay, now when you put a mixer after a pedal, the signal is split. You get a clean signal going to the mixer. You get the pedal signal going to the mixer. You can blend in as much of the pedal as you want with the mix control here. So I need to assign this unmapped control to this mix fader. So there's the unmapped parameter for this unmapped pot. With it highlighted, I click Learn, and I just click on that fader on the mixer. Boom. Turn off Learn. I've now mapped the pedal board mix, the fader, to this part. OK. This now adds in or takes away the amount of the pedal board. Let's have a listen. But it's back to front. As you turn it up, it takes away the reverb, turn it down, it adds reverb. It's back to front, so with that control highlighted, there's the parameter, the mapping it's it's doing, the pedal board mix. Invert it with this invert here. Look, invert. Now it's inverted and it works correctly, turning up the amount of spring reverb. So I'll just set my spring reverb. Um, I'm going to set it to a short time vintage style. There we go. Right, that's that. Now the next thing is I want this smart control pot to do the same thing it was doing with the fuzzoir. I want it to turn the pedal board plug in off and on. I want this pot, when it's completely counterclockwise, to turn the pedal board off. And then when I turn it up one notch, I want it to turn the pedal board on and then turn up the mix. It's doing the mix already, but we need to add the thing where it turns the pedal board on off. So again, with the pot highlighted, we go, there's the current mapping for this pot, pedal board mix, add mapping. There's the unmapped slot, and we need to assign this to the bypass for the pedal board. Now on the channel here, the pedal board is the second insert because the ultra beat counts as an insert. So with this unmapped slot selected, we go to the drop down list there and we assign it to main insert to bypass, Boom. which is the pedal board bypass. OK, we've mapped the bypass of the pedal board to the pot now. But the problem is, just make it smaller. Look at the pedal board off on here. When I turn up the mix control, the bypass is now assigned to this mix control. When I turn up the mix control, the pedal board is on, 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 and then in the middle of the travel of the pot, it turns off. Look, on, off, on, off. Right in the middle of the travel of the pot. OK. And it, it's doing that incorrectly because, look, here's the, here's the mapping, the bypass of the pedal board. Open the scaling here, look. Scaling, yeah. It's doing it incorrectly because, turn off this step, because the scaling here is incorrect. It's right in the middle, like that, which is causing the pedal board to bypass in the middle of the travel of this part. So the scaling here, this vertical blue line right in the middle here, for this bypass pedal board mapping for the pot is incorrect. Now, trust me. <laughs> Don't try to make the correct type of scaling to do this on-off effect by yourself. You'll be in a world of hurt. We need to find another pot that does the on-off at the bottom of its travel for a plug-in and copy the scaling from another pot. Now, currently, 
with the voice I'm editing here, no other smart control has that effect where when you turn the pot down, it turns off the plug-in it's connected to. So we need to copy the scaling from a smart control from another voice, right? So, look. I make another instrument track. And on this instrument track, I'm going to load drum machine, drum machine designer, kit pieces. I'm going to load up a hi-hat, one hi-hat. Any of them will do. I've got beat machine on there now. All right, there it is on the track now. Here's its smart controls. Every hi-hat, one hi-hat has the spread control. And as you know from previous parts of the tutorial, wherever you see the spread control, and it's a common control, it's on a lot of voices, it is connected to a stereo delay. Here's the output channel for the hi-hat. It's connected to a stereo delay. Now this always has that on-off feature where you turn the pot up and it turns the plug-in on. Turn it fully counterclockwise, it turns the plug-in off. On, off, on, off. So with the spread control here selected, there's the bypass parameter. Open the scaling, there is the correct scaling, this almost vertical blue line on the left. It's pre-highlighted, copy it with the copy button, copy. Now we go back to the snare we're editing, go to the control, go to the bypass for the pedal board, open the scaling, there's the incorrect scaling, and paste in the correct scaling, boom, that we just copied from the spread from the higher. There's the correct scaling, pasted in for the bypass for the pedal board, right? Now we don't need the Hyatt anymore. Get rid of it. So now if I open the pedal board, now this control here, Look, at the bottom of its travel, it turns the plug-in off. Turns it on, off, on, off. Now it's working. So you move it up, it turns the plug-in on and turns up the mix control now. All done, right? So that's everything. Um, oh, let's rename this control. It's currently called Mix. Let's rename it Spring, because it's controlling the spring reverb. That's it. The only other thing is the panel is currently called text, so click on that word text and we'll rename it snare one, which is what all snare ones are called on their panel, like that. There we are. So we're all done. Let's open the ultra beat again. We can test everything now. When you test, turn the editor off, because then it makes the, the pots easy to move. Let's test everything. Pitch. Length. Envelope uh, works fine. All working, and of course, pan and volume will work. They're all fine. Last thing, just check the level. Set this fader to zero for the channel, for the for the ultra beat voice here. Set it to zero, just make sure we're getting a good strong level. Yeah, that seems good. Okay, all done. Okay, so turn off all these notes, turn off the sequencer. We're ready to save our edited voice. So, with the track selected, bottom of the library, save. Now, the next thing. When you go to save your edited factory voice, you've got to save it as a custom voice patch. You click save and Logic takes you to your user patch location. It tries to prompt you to save in here. Well, we don't want to save in there. Let's cancel that. We don't want our lovely custom drum machine designer snare to be saved all the way over here in user patches, jumbled in with all the other user patches. We want it to be in Drum Machine, Drum Machine Designer, Kit Pieces, Snares, alongside all the factory snares. Well, the path for that is, look, you need to set that up in the Finder. Okay, now I'm using Mavericks. The path to all your factory Drum Machine Designer factory voice folders is here. Library, Application Support, Logic, Patches, Instrument, 
drum machine, drum machine designer, and there it is, Z01 kit pieces. Inside that, there's the folders with all the factory voices in. Right? So you find you go to this location in your finder and you drag the Z01 kit pieces and drop a shortcut to it into your favourites there. I've already done it there, Z01 kit pieces. So I've got this shortcut now in my favourites to all the factory folders with all the factory drum machine designer voice patches in. Right, you do that on the finder. Now, we've finished editing our factory voice on the track. We're ready to save it as a custom voice. Select the track, save. Logic takes you to your user patch location, but you go to Z01 kit pieces in your, in your favorites there, and there's the folders. Now, we're saving a snare. So we must go into the folder. Don't think you can just open the folder and have it highlighted like that and save. It won't save your custom voice in the folder. We're saving a snare. We must double click and go into the snare folder. Now we're ready to title our custom voice. Now you don't title the first bit. Don't retitle that. Leave it as snare one or kick one or hi-out one or whatever. Just title it after the hyphen because you want your voice to be in the library as a snare one snare or kick one kick or hi-out one hi-out you know the correct type along with the other ones so I'm going to rename mine snare one Rogers because it's a Rogers snare sample spring so I know it has the spring reverb save boom and da -da -da -da, there it is in snares Rogers spring along with all the other factory voices wonderful right that's it we don't need this track anymore get rid of it so there's our drum machine designer on an instrument track. Let's open her up. It's currently got the after party kit loaded. And let's load our snare. Snare pad. Library takes me to snares and I'll load up my Rogers Spring. Boom. There it is. Loaded into drum machine designer. It's got the correct icon. There's its title, snare one, Rogers Spring. There's the panel with the correct title, snare one, all the controls and everything. It's on the correct MIDI note number, triggered by the note D1. And in the stack, let's go into our stack. In the stack, there's the snare and clap submix. It's rooted to the correct submix. Everything works lovely, chubbly. There it is. That's how you do that. Okay. We made a simple sample based snare custom voice patch. But obviously, in tutorials that follow in, in this whole series, I'm going to show you how to make more advanced voices like a synthesized kick voice, etc. All right. But that's the principle for making a custom voice. Alrighty. Let's move on.